So we just started out by listing the four rules for a geometric setting and really you need to <laughs> you need to know at least three of them because they're the same as binomial. All right, so um, I'm not going to write this all out and bore you. Um, you can pause the video and fill in your notes yourself. Um, so the first one is success or failure, just like binomial. Trials are independent, again, just like binomial. Probabilities are the same for each trial, again, same as binomial. Um, before we go to the last one, I had a question, uh, probabilities are the same for each observation, like which one is it? Is it trial or observation? Well, going into it, it's a trial. Once you've done the trial and you see what happened, it's an observation because you can observe what happened. But to be honest, I'm not going to sweat the small stuff on that one. Call it what you want, just so long as you have the idea down. So anyway, the fourth one is, remember for binomial, it was a fixed number of trials. Here your variable of interest is the number of trials until the first success occurs. So if you need to write those down, pause and do it. Um, after that, this is really pretty much the same thing as what we had for binomial. Um, it's a uh, basketball player shooting free throws. We're going to look at an 80% success rate, 50 and 20% success rate. Um, N is going to be 7. Naturally, we don't uh, tend to just lop off a geometric necessarily um, at a certain uh, value because there's no fixed number of trials but keep in mind in uh, the real world a basketball player just can't stand there and shoot free throws indefinitely right you you can have geometric behavior up to a point and then the whole thing just artificially ends all right so for 80 percent you may remember uh, binomial was skewed to the right uh, for 50% it was symmetric and for 20% it was skewed left. Now you can see what's going to happen here but when we did this in class we these were blank and we didn't fill them in in class we just kind of did it on the calculator so that's what's next. All right, It's a little bit of calculator training here so we need to go down into a spreadsheet because what we want to do is fill in the spreadsheet link it to a histogram, probability histogram. Then we can just change the parameters in the spreadsheet and the graph should change with it. So this is what we want and we're gonna, since we're graphing it, we're gonna label this X. And remember I taught you sequence for filling in real quickly. Um, we're only needing to put in seven numbers so we might as well just put those in without worrying about it. And remember that uh, geometric does not start with zero because you have to have a free throw in order to have a success. So one through seven is what we'll put in here. And it goes pretty quickly. All right, now we need to give it all of the geometric PDFs and we're gonna do it like we did for binomial. We're gonna do it all with one formula. So I'm gonna label this column P for probability. And then the next, the next field down is gonna be for your spreadsheet formulas. And you activate it by hitting equals. And remember, it's menu, uh, statistics, distributions. And then we just need to scroll down until we get to geometric PDF, which this thing really enjoys not getting there for me. But here we go, we will get down there, I hope. Oh, maybe it's, there it goes. What a strange thing this is, finally. All right, so uh, geometric PDF. Um, we're gonna start with the 80%, so 0.8, and we want the X value to be X, because that's what we labeled our X value column with. So we'll just call that X. So we're gonna be doing a variable reference, so hit OK, or tab down to OK and hit Enter. All right, then hit Enter again. No, it's not a column reference. It is a variable reference. So right arrow to get the choice, down arrow to make the choice, hit Enter, then tab to OK. There they all are. Now, if you stop for a minute before we make the histogram, um, 
it's an 80% free throw shooter, so the free throw shooter is pretty good. I mean, this is a, a very skilled player, so we would expect really for that person to get his first make made free throw right away. And so the probability that he's going to make it on the first one, or she, is 0.8. And then it just kind of drops off quickly. So we should see a mean somewhere around 1, right? So let's go to the home screen and we want to scoot over one to the right to get our stats graph. Uh, remember your horizontal just is X and don't pick anything for the vertical because you're just going to make these dots form some weird pattern. We want a histogram. So go to menu and plot properties and add a Y summary list. That's choice nine. And we get to now pick either P or X. We want P. And so there it is. So how would you describe this? It's pretty much clearly skewed to the right. But you might want to say, yeah, it's kind of radically skewed to the right. Maybe extremely skewed to the right. Because this is most of your probability between the first three classes. And the tallest one is right around one, which we would expect for an 80% free throw shooter should get a free throw made right away okay so from there we just uh, well we didn't but um, we just wrote in here extremely skewed to the right and you can see how I drew it in there with my labels titles scales neatness rulers and the whole bit okay then we went down here and we filled this in Remember, for a geometric, the um, expected value, mu, is 1 over the probability. So we get 1.25. And back here, that's about where this thing is topping out. So it makes perfect sense. And remember, your standard deviation is 1 minus 0.8 over 0.8 squared, which is 0 0.5590. That is relatively small. And again, you have uh, not much spread here. I mean, I know it seems to just stretch out for a while, but most of your probability is packed in at one side, so it makes sense to have a probability that's pretty small. Okay, so doing this now for the other two options is really quick. So just control and arrow to the left to get back in here, and then go up into your formula field and hit enter. And now that it's selected, you can just arrow in there and change the 0.8, go past it and then delete back and just change it to 0.5. Enter, yes. And you can see that the probability of the first shot being successful drops from 0.8 to 0.5, right? But things are still dropping off from there. So when we go and look at the histogram, which should already have been made for this situation, See, it's still skewed to the right, but it's more gradual. Let's just call it skewed to the right and leave the extreme off of it, okay? So um, back at the drawing, you can see it's, uh, that's what we wrote in here, skewed to the right. And well, the expected value is 1 over 0.5, which is 2. And that makes uh, sort of sense because, you know, this, the balance point for this is somewhere right around here, maybe here and that's about two and the standard deviation gets bigger because you have more of a spread here see how it's more spread out all right and so the last one um let's see let's go back here and control arrow left and we'll change we'll go up here and hit enter so we can change the formula and uh, we want that 0.5 to go to point Two. So pass the 5, delete back, change it to a 2, hit enter twice. And now this is all the way down from 0 0.8 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.2. But still, this is the biggest value because everything that comes after gets smaller and smaller and smaller. All right. So as you've already been looking at this thing, um, whoops, I want the, um, the drawing. All right, it's still skewed to the right but it's let's go with gradually skewed to the right and yeah so all geometric distributions are skewed to the right no matter what the probability is it's just um, they become more gradual in their skew 
as the probability values get smaller. And then down here, you can see that mu is 1 over 0.2, which is 5. Look, a 20% free throw shooter is not a good free throw shooter. You would expect a bunch of misses until this person makes one. All right? And the standard deviation got bigger because, you know, the spread was even more obvious. Now, the one thing I can say here is I really should put shot, 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 shot. It needs units, and for some reason, idiot me didn't put it there. But you're smarter than me, so make sure you have shots listed after these summary numbers. So here, all the distributions are skewed to the right, becoming more gradual as the probability values get smaller. Okay. Um, yeah. So you can pause and write that in there. Once you're back, look at the p-values. They go from smallest to middle and then to finally the biggest of the three. So as the p-value gets smaller, the spread gets larger. All right? Okay. So that's what we covered. Uh, the rest of this was homework, which I'm going to leave up to you to finish. And what I want to do now is pause this, uh, and I want to just go and pick up yesterday's homework, because as I'm thinking about it, there is something there that I want to talk to, talk to you about. All right, so I'm back. Um, this was the homework from, uh, I think, what, Thursday night? And I just want to uh, point out a couple of things. First of all, in problem number four, this is the one, remember, with the nice little text box there. Um, an insurance company expects its salesperson to achieve a minimum monthly sales of 50,000, and the probability of any month selling 50,000 is 0.84. All right, this is what I want to bring up. If the sales in any one month are independent of the sales in any other, what is the probability that exactly three months will elapse before the salesperson reaches the acceptable minimum monthly goal? It's really this, exactly three months will elapse. Sort of like, what does that mean? What does elapse mean? And we all agreed it meant that, you know, one month came and went, the second month came and went, and the third month came and went, which means it ended. So exactly three months will elapse before the salesperson reaches the acceptable minimum monthly goal. That means you're in the fourth month, okay? That's the way I read it. Now, the only reason I bring this up is because some people will say, you know, what's the probability that exactly three months? And then you just put a three in when you really wanted a four. So really geometric and binomial aren't the hardest things in the world. Um, it's just a matter of making sure you know what you're, what you're reading. You got to read it and you got to understand it. Um, number nine down here, right? So you've got an Olympic archer who hits a bullseye 80% of the time and she's um, only making six shots, right? That seems to be binomial for anything because it seems to be an upper limit. But again, you can't take an archer and just have them shoot an arrow in the air forever, right? In the real world, geometric models do stop because you just can't keep going forever. So if you read A, her first bullseye comes on the third arrow, that is geometric. It is not binomial, even though there's only six arrows shot. Now to contrast that, if you look at C, gets exactly four bullseyes, that's four bullseyes out of six shots. That's binomial, right? Fits all the conditions for a binomial. It shows up again up here. So there's this robot arm that's trying to spot weld on a door frame or something like that, They're trying to hit a magnetic dot or be guided by it. But it only gets three attempts at it because the thing is moving. It's going down a conveyor belt. So um, what's the probability the robot's first attempt will be on attempts one or two? All right, well, okay, <laughs> you would think only it's only got three chances to make it, but still, it's the first um, attempt, you know, the success on the first attempt. Uh, it's at the one or two tries. That is geometric. Um, when you get to C, it says here, if 10,000 door panels are made, what is the expected number of defective panels? All right, that is a, a dead fixed upper limit. Right? So that becomes binomial. It's not geometric where they just kind of arbitrarily stop somewhere. 
that is just n is 10,000 all right so there is a mixture of geometric and binomial pretty much from now on you just have to be able to pick which is one is which all right